Live from Austin, Texas, at the tech gathering of the year. They call it Spring Break for Geeks. Rackspace, the open cloud company, presents the Scobalizer with the movers, the doers, shaking things up and impacting our world. Now, Robert Scoble, the open cloud experience. Welcome back to the uh, Rackspace Open Cloud Experience here at South by Southwest 2013 here in Austin, Texas. Uh, we have a huge space here where we're meeting with customers and partners and talking about the, how we open source the cloud and uh, are bringing uh, innovative new cloud features that other people don't have uh, to you. But here on our show, we're uh, meeting with interesting startups and uh, innovators and entrepreneurs and people uh, that we're playing in off the streets to see what they're doing, what the, the latest is on the bleeding edge of the internet. And this app, uh, my friend O Malik said it was the most exciting thing he saw last year. And I, 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 I wanted to see it, so I had to get him on my show to see it. <laughs> it's called uh, Mind Meld, it's an iPad app that we're, that's gonna do a lot of stuff to serve us and we're gonna find out about it right now. I hope so. Who are you? Uh, I'm Tim Tuttle. I'm the CEO and founder of Expect Labs. <coughs> uh, Expect Labs is a technology company, a startup based in San Francisco. Right. And we're building a, a platform to power this new generation of intelligent assistants that can hopefully you know, help you in a lot of different ways. Well, and this has me hot and bothered. And I think it's one of the trends here at South by Southwest is, uh, I call it con contextual systems, yeah. where you, you are having a lot of sensors come out here, like the Basis Watch was hot here, that their session was sold yeah. out, um, to uh, wearable computers. Yep. A few people are now getting the Google Glass. <laughs> I saw yeah. I saw the guy who runs uh, uh, tum tum uh, um, Tumblr. Yeah. Uh, he had a Google Glass yeah, David on. Carp, David Carp. David Carp, he had one. Do you on. have a pair yet? I don't have you, my pair yet. Well, I'm you, really I would jealous. Think you would be the first to get one. I no, he was the first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll be happy with it being the seventh. <laughs> but uh, the, the, and I met the Google Glass team uh, mm -hmm. last night at one of the parties, and and they're all wearing their yeah. their thing. Yeah. Um, and we're seeing big data, right? And that's a trend that we talked about yesterday with um, uh, several of the startups and several of the uh, you know people. Um, and social data and 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 location data are yeah. continuing to go up exponentially. So so what that means is. Companies are going to be able to build personalized and predictive systems, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you're at the forefront of this. So yeah. tell me of what you're doing. Yeah, so, so you're absolutely right. We're, we're entering the, the age of context, right? Which, what that means is that the devices that we use every single day will be able to pay attention to everything that's happening in our lives. And they'll do that so that they can do a much better job understanding, uh, understanding what you say, understanding what you, what's important to you, and in many cases, they'll be able to find the information that you want without you ever needing to search for it or before you need to search for it. And so what we're doing is we're building a, a cloud-based infrastructure to power applications like that. And we call these applications anticipatory computing. We say that because it's not quite predictive computing. All we're trying to do is understand what's happening in your life good enough so that we can preempt the need for you to explicitly search for stuff. Yep. You know, and, and maybe in some cases we can like get you the information you need before you actually search, but it, in most cases, we just want to make it so that you don't have to type a search, you don't have to enter and ex ask an explicit question. Yep. We can and get the information from context. We're yeah. seeing lots of new apps. I, I love the Tempo app yeah. that came out of yeah. SRI. Me too. Yeah. Because like, I, I just put a meeting on my uh, calendar called Flipboard. It yeah. had no other data on it. And it found in my email the context and put that in there. Yeah. And it also found off the web the address of Flipboard which they just changed location, so it had the yeah. new one. Yeah, it was, and it yeah, saved awesome. me a lot of time of yeah. flipping around, trying to search things, you know, because it anticipated what I needed, yeah. right? Yeah, so I think so. The first generation of contextually aware app aware apps are very much like Tempo or Google Now, yeah. where they're looking at location and then temporal events like calendar to try to be more intelligent about what information they present to you. So what Google Now does a really good job at is if it knows that you go to work at nine o'clock every morning and there's a traffic jam, it'll tell you in advance, right? Uh, you know, and uh, Tempo does a great job. If there's something in your calendar and you end up um, needing information about that event, it can get that information for you in advance without you needing to do a whole lot of searches. The, the, what we're doing is we're focused on a different area. We're focused on the idea of real-time 
conversations, real-time interactions, yeah. with the idea that you and I are having a conversation right now, there's a huge amount of contextual information that's just in this conversation. Yeah, that we can just be, mentioned yeah. several companies, right? right? And so like, we're not very far away from be, having intelligent assistants being able to listen alongside and then be ready to pull up information related to this. Like they could pull up information about where, you know, Tempo and the product is. We talked about, you know, Expect Labs and maybe pull up the interview that like we did last fall related to that. I mean, that's all um, right around the corner. Yeah. yeah. And this is going to be a bigger and bigger deal, particularly when we're wearing wearable yeah. computers. Yeah. In fact, the code name for the Google Glass was Wingman, right? Because it was right? a okay. guy who was there right. all the time <laughs> helping you live your life. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. And we today we have iPads and phones mm -hmm. on our desks yep. while we're in meetings, and these have sensors on them, right? Yep. They have an audio sensor, they have Absolutely. all sorts of other sensors. So, uh, so, the, so Google Glass stuff is really interesting, but, um, but what's, what, what's really exciting about this, I think, is that it's, this is not just going to be in your next generation glasses. Th this companion, this intelligent companion, it's going to be in every application that you use and every device that you use. It's going to be in your car. It's going to be in your smart TV. It's going to, of course, be in your smartphone. It's going to be in your wristwatch. And every time you use these devices, they'll have a much better understanding of you. And you'll come to expect that they'll be able to get information that you want without, you requir without requiring you to ask a specific question or press a button and say, show me that information about you know, where the champion sports bar is in downtown Austin, right? It'll, so like Siri, yeah. Siri today, if you want to navigate, you click the button, you say, yeah. navigate me to champions right. in Austin. Right. And it does, here it just listens to you. Right? It'll listen, maybe you, t you mentioned to your friend that you're meeting Robert Scoble at champion sports bar, and then the next time you pull out your phone, it will show you the map of how to get there, because it knows that there's a calendar appointment or it knows, that, our app doesn't do this now, but okay. we're not we're not far away from this future, right? Yeah. Um, now, maybe we should get a demo because because <laughs> okay. I want I want to see this thing because uh, okay. it's been uh, hyped up by by my friend at home, <laughs> <laughs> and when he says something's really cool, it usually is really cool. Yeah. So. <clears throat> so I'll show you that, but I'll preface it by saying that as a company, what we're doing is we're building a platform to power lots of different applications. And we have one version of um, that we think is a good showcase yeah. of how this could work, and it's an iPad app called MindMeld. But in parallel, what we've been doing over the past four months since, um, you know, since the fall is we've been working with a number of very large uh, partners to help power experiences like this, or even different experiences inside their devices, inside their applications. Yeah and the range of applications you're going to see over the next year are, is going to be pretty awesome. Okay. But I'll give you a taste. I can show you what, what this app does and just, um, yeah, and we're going to make this app look publicly available in the spring, but as I said before, we're already working with some partners um, who are using tech, the technology under this in their own applications. Very cool. Okay, so, the, so let's see here. So the application is called MindMeld. So what I will do is I'll start a new conversation. Um, so the way it works is MindMeld is a, um, a voice companion, an intelligent voice companion that can understand your conversation, can understand what you say when you talk with other people in a conversation, yeah. then use that to automatically find related information. When you start a new conversation, you can uh, invite people through your social graph if you like. So I'll, I'll invite a couple of my colleagues. Um, and then if you want to save information about this conversation in the cloud, you can... Um, you can give it a name, but that's optional. Um, you can decide if it's a private conversation or if it's a public conversation or just open to your friends. Okay. And that's it. Now you can have um, you can have a conversation. And it's listening to you. Well, so I'm just muted because I want to uh, okay. talk about this. But the, you can have a conversation with a group of people. Okay. Um, and you can have eight people talking at the same time. It'll try to understand what everyone says during the conversation. Yep. Or you can just use it by yourself to do voice-driven browsing and discovery of content. Yep. Now, when you start the app, what it shows you is information from the social context of everybody that is in the conversation with you. So it'll pull information from your social graph and your friend's social graph. It'll pull information from LinkedIn so you can get up to speed on what's happening in someone's life before the conversation starts. And then as you talk, it can understand parts of what you say and then pull in related information. So, you know, I was watching the Academy Awards a couple weeks ago, and I thought it was hilarious that William Shatner um, uh, made a cameo appearance, and he tried to help Seth MacFarlane uh, save the Academy Awards um, for the future. 
don't remember exactly what happened, but it was pretty hilarious. Um, so as you can see, the application right now is attempting to understand what everyone said, and it's pulling in related information. Uh, so the big surprise of the night was that girl from Silver Linings Playbook. She ended up winning Best Actress, and as she was going to accept her award, she ended up tripping on her dress and falling down. Her name's uh, Jennifer Lawrence, I think. Um, so I'm supposed to make dinner for my friends on Saturday night. I told my friends I'd make Italian food. Yeah. And I think I'm going to make fettuccine Alfredo. So I got to find a really good fettuccine Alfredo recipe. Um, if I have time, I'll probably make dessert. Maybe I'll make uh, New York style cheesecake. Mm. Um, let's see. Uh, so Tiger Woods played in a golf tournament this weekend. I think he ended up winning the Cadillac Championship at Doral. So maybe he's going to win the Masters this year. Yeah. So what, as you can see, what MindMeld is doing, it, it's trying to listen in on our conversation. Yeah. As we talk, it's trying to understand what are the key concepts and the meaning of the conversation. And then in real time, it's trying, automatically trying to go and find content from my social graph and from the web that it thinks might be relevant. And this app, we sort of show it to you as this continuously changing display of content. Yeah. And if you focus on the app here, I'll show you a couple features. So on the left-hand side of this app, what MindMail does is it tries to sort of show you what it understood from the conversation. You know, and as typical speech to text goes, sometimes it understands it really well, sometimes it doesn't. But over time, it learns and attempts to pull the key concepts and the meaning of the conversation. And that way, if you want to drill down on something specific that someone said in the past, in one tap, you can find that information. So you never need to open up the keyboard. You never need to type a search. Just by pulling stuff out of the conversation, in one tap, we can get you there. And on the right side of the app, what we try to show you is content from social graph, your personal data sources, or the, the web that could be related to the conversation. So here, this is a consumer app, so we're showing you news articles, videos, um, you know, pictures from now, Facebook. Now, you, <clears throat> I would use this probably in a business meeting context. Does it understand that? So if we're in a strategy meeting, we start, yeah. hey, should we buy a XYZ company? Would it come up? What would it show? Uh, you know, let's say we started talking about Apple Computer yeah. and its strategy. What, yeah. what would it? do this? Yeah, well, so at this consumer app, it'll probably show you, you know, this MindMeld app is designed for consumers, yeah. so it will show you probably TechCrunch articles, Wikipedia entries about Apple Computer, but the exciting thing that we're working on is we're working with some of these large companies, and what, what they, what they want to build is essentially what you described. This is internal intelligent assistant that can work alongside business meetings that's plugged into their corporate knowledge base yeah. of documents and, you know, internal reports so that as you're talking, it can actually pull in that, that data. So it becomes this sort of very intelligent internal information dashboard that can help alongside these meetings. Right? Now, yeah, this is a technology a little bit like Siri. Yeah. It's listening to your voice. Yeah. It's converting that. Are you using Nuance, or, you, or did you build your own uh, tech, uh, speech to text yeah. engine? So, so a part of this, one of the things as a company we're focused on is trying to provide this predictive, contextual intelligence around voice, because we think as, yeah. as we move to this world where devices have, don't have keyboards anymore, voice becomes a much faster way to get what you want. And so um, we've built a, some of the technology around voice ourselves, but we also last year announced a partnership with uh, Nuance. And Google is also an investor in our company, so we've also um, uh, used some of their technology as well around speech to text. Yeah. And so it, we have a combination where we have some of the um, on-device capabilities using our technology, but yeah. then we leverage Nuance and Google in some cases and to does do speech it, to text. Does it train on your voice? Does it get better as you use it more? Or, yeah. And is there any way to talk to the engine, you, you know, and impel it? Because I, I wore a Motorola headset one time, and yeah. you could talk to it by saying GoldenEye. Yeah. And when I heard that word, <laughs> it knew that it was you yeah. know, being explicitly talked to. So GoldenEye turn on, and it would turn on, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, is there something like this where I could talk to MindMeld directly and say, MindMeld, find me a Google yeah. search result on 
Flipboard, for instance. Yeah, so the, like so the version that we will launch will do exactly that. The, pu the public version that we'll launch will do exactly that. Okay. We have a version that, um, uh, that we use for sort of more enterprise applications that's designed to listen all the time and try to extract signal from the noise. Yeah. But we think that for the consumer, like the, um, you know, the iPad or smartphone version of this, users will want to be able to ask it questions or get it commands, and so it'll definitely work in that mode as well. Some of the for instance that I want to use this for is in a business context, a business meeting, uh, you know, mind mail pull up uh, all Rackspace sales for last quarter. Yeah. Okay, uh, show me only the sales from California. Yeah. Show me the, only the sales from San Francisco. Yeah. Can it, is it to that level? And, <laughs> and if not, yeah, uh, not what will take, what will it mean to get it to that level? Will, will I have to custom program? Yeah. In like Rackspace data sources from Salesforce and from other places that we store yeah. that kind of data yeah. so that we can talk to it in real time like that? Well, so the, the, the first, so our, I don't think, uh, our, our system right now doesn't have that level of intelligence to be able to do interactive um, commands, but, but it certainly will in the near future, right? That's not, that's a fairly well understood problem. We just haven't focused on that yet. Yeah. But the, the key piece that's required here. Um, you know, what, what you and what many of our partners are asking for is a system that is uniquely capable of understanding the data that they have in their own interpret system. So if, if you have a set of sales reports or your quarterly financials or your product specifications internally, and you, th these companies want to be able to have an interactive assistant that understands what those reports are, what yeah. the products are, and so what we've started to do since the fall is work with these big partners to find a way for them to plug in those internal data sources so that the intelligent assistant gets smarter yeah. about being able to respond to those questions. And that's exactly what's going to happen over the next three to four or five years. Yeah. Context is going to expand from sort of general consumer knowledge, your calendar, you know, where your location is, to include all of these, in some cases, proprietary data sources yeah. Um, that make these systems smarter in a wide variety of domains. No, I, I, I can't wait to see yeah. where you guys go. I mean, it's clearly, the, it's understanding voice really well, yeah. or well enough. Yeah. I don't think that's the limiting factor anymore. Yeah. It's the, the data sources that are inside. Siri has this problem, right? Yeah. You can ask Siri a question like, how many people are checked in at the Champion Sports Lounge yeah. or Sports Bar? There is an answer for that. It's Foursquare an knows answer. the answer. Yeah. There is an API for that, yeah. but it's not hooked up to Siri. And yeah. Siri goes, I uh, don't know what you're talking yeah. about. And it goes to Bing yeah. and gives me a stupid answer. Yeah. It's not the, the answer I was trying yeah. to get to, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I could just imagine talking to this thing and saying, oh, okay, you know, if we're in a sales meeting together yeah. and, and you're, we're trying to figure out how to reallocate resources or change yeah. compensation or, you know, yeah. or change strategy, we might have lots of questions like, okay, yeah. show us average sales per employee worldwide. Okay, yeah. change that to just showing us, you know, New York versus San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, and because that, that'll help us have a better business model. Yeah. If we could have that kind of level of data here, it's like yeah. mind blowing. Right? So it, it, it's absolutely going to happen. So it doesn't, it's not happening today, but it's a matter, as you said, of integrating all these data sources. And, um, like the, the ability to do that today compared to like two years ago, the amount of data that's available online is huge. Yep. It's a huge opportunity to make these systems significantly more intelligent by plugging them into freely available data that's on the web. Let's go uh, uh, out of the enterprise and back to the consumer. Yeah. One of the things I'd love to talk to this thing about is, for instance, I'm at South by Southwest. Yeah. I might want to get an early flight out. Yeah. Right? Right now, that means opening up a United yeah. app and doing a lot yeah. of clicking. Yeah. I, I even have to enter mm -hmm. in my damn uh, mm -hmm. frequent flyer number. Yeah. It, it doesn't save that for some reason, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. for security reasons. Yeah. And then uh, and it's hard to figure out when's the best flight leaving yeah. town. I use a service called Hitmark. You know, yeah. So yeah. it's a lot of work. Yeah. I'd love to talk to this and say, hey, I'd like to leave, you know, mind meld, I'd like to leave from Austin to San Francisco, yep. and I'd like to leave tonight. Yep. Is there anything available? Yeah. You know, and have it display that. Yeah. So the way this is going to happen, so that doesn't exist today, yeah. but it will. And the way it's going to happen, in my opinion, in our opinion, is not that Siri is going to become uber intelligent and be able to understand all United flights. What's, what's going to happen and what our business is really built around is the idea that 
this intelligence is going to be built in every application that you want. And so, for example, we're, we're uh, launching a platform this year that will allow a company like United to create an intelligent assistant inside their applications mm. that is uniquely intelligent about every single flight, about every city that they fly to, about the type of planes that they're on. And by plugging into their, their data set, Right, their, their days, which, which already has knowledge of their flight schedules, already has knowledge of you know, which routes are delayed and which routes are not delayed, and probably knows about you, know, you from your travel patterns. Yep. You can get, we can actually deliver on that promise of creating the very intelligent travel assistant, travel companion. But a critical piece of that is being able to plug in those data sources about, um, about flight schedules and things like that. So, so that's why we're working with these partners, right? Plugging in their data sets one by one Every time we plug in a new data set, our system gets smarter about this new domain that you might yeah. care about. How much does it have to train on your voice to work at this yeah. quality so that was, level? Yeah, so the question you asked before. So um, the system that we have right now is designed, um, uh, it gets better the more you use it. And this consumer app is designed to um, understand you very well. And the way that it works is when you start using it, it's pretty good out of the box. But over the first um, you know, 10 minutes or 15 minutes of using it, it gets much better or it gets, well, it gets, um, you know, maybe it goes from 90% accurate to 95% accuracy, something like that. Okay. Uh, it's not out yet. I don't yeah. have it on my iPad. No, you don't have it on your <laughs> when, iPad. When is it coming out? Uh, so the, what yeah. are you aiming at? Well, so, um, so our original plan in the fall was that we were going to release this consumer app first and make it available and get feedback from users. W um, when we started talking about this, we got a, a ton, as I said, a ton of inbound interest from partners. And so we've delayed the launch of the consumer app a little bit so that we can... Um, build out our platform to power these partner applications, but we still intend to launch this consumer app, and we expect it's going to be out this spring. As you can see, it's almost um, almost entirely done. There's just some we've had to take some resources off the consumer app and focus on some of the enterprise stuff. Yep. But I expect it'll be out this spring, first on the iPad, then on the iPhone, and then Android a little after this. Okay. But most importantly, the um, the platform that our partners are building new applications on top of, we're going to also release that to developers. And I think that's going to happen towards the end of the summer. Okay. But it'll be a really powerful platform that will allow you or any developer or United or Comcast or any big company to build their own yeah. very intelligent assistant on top are, of this. Are you thinking about Google Glass? I, obviously, Google yeah. Glass is a small market. Yeah. First of all, it's not out yet. Yeah. <laughs> and it probably is going to ship by the end of the year. Yeah. But even next year, I would expect to see them sell uh, yeah. uh, maybe a million yeah. copies, where iPad is going to sell 100 million copies yeah. right? yeah. or more. Yeah. Um, and, or tablets, uh, Android and iPad, too, yeah. are going to sell hundreds of millions of copies. And that's a resource problem for you. You know, it's, it's like, how many developers do <laughs> right. you have? Right. Well, we have 12. 12, yeah. yeah. So you, <laughs> We're how, small. How, how do you stretch them? You know, where do you yeah. put your resources? But yeah. I, I assume you're thinking about it. You're in play for the next world yeah. coming at us. Well, so the, the idea of a Google Glass where you have a system that's with you, sees everything you see, hears everything you hear, is able to respond intelligently every time you want information. That's exactly why we built our platform. So as soon as Google Glass has some type of a developer framework that lets you know, third-party technologies integrate, we will be there. Yeah, and that's coming uh, within weeks. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the developers have already seen it at some two hackathons. Yeah. But the problem is, nobody has the glasses yet. Well, okay. David Carp at Tumblr right. has the. He's the first mm -hmm. guy I've seen outside of Google that get gla the yeah. glass. Yeah. So they're coming. Yeah. Uh, and then it's the end of the year before, before consumers can get can buy them. Yeah. Right? So. It's a or 2014. Do you think it's end of the year? Or what's, you think no, it's like bad Christmas? they're aiming at this Christmas. They want really? to get them into consumer. Yeah. Now, are awesome. they going to be sold at any quantity? I right. don't know. I, right. you know. There's a lot of challenges to building hardware. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Google is okay at it, but they're not, they're not the best at it. Yeah. So it's, uh, really, they're really having to ramp up, and they're being cagey. Yeah, I hope so. I hope I can get one. Um, how much is it, are you going to sell this app? Is it going to be free? Mm. This or costs it... twenty five hundred dollars. Excellent. And uh, <laughs> well, I'll sign up. <laughs> yeah, you can get it on Layaway in the App Store. No, we expect it's um, it'll it'd be free or at least available at a nominal cost. Yeah. I think um, a couple yeah, bucks. A couple bucks. Yeah. A latte. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but sure. um, yeah, I can show you a couple other features in the app if you're interested. Please do. So um, so what? The, so a, just a couple other small features in this app. So 
What we want to explore in this app is a way to do very simple touch and voice-driven browsing. And the other thing in this app is that you, it's also, you can use it by yourself or you can use it to have a conversation with a group of people. Um, and so you could actually invite other people to join you in the app and you can talk to a group of eight people. So as everyone's talking, the app can show you information based on what everyone's saying. Yeah. And then if you want to collaborate around the content, we have this model where if you want to share something with the other people that you're talking with, you just drag it to the right onto the sharing workspace and you drop it there and then instantly everybody else who's using the app can see it on their iPad, right? So if I want to point out a video to the people that I'm talking with or I want to share a recipe you know, from this website, I just drag it over here into the sharing workspace and everything that anyone shares there is sort of seen in real time and automatically archived in the cloud and organized intuitively so that you can easily find it later. And so it's this, this we're exploring this way to use voice and touch to do sort of lightweight collaboration around content. Yep. And we think you know, it's so hard to do this on a touch device using copy and paste and pinch and zoom that, um, you know. No, this is really cool if, if you're planning a vacation with three or four other exactly. people. Exactly, planning a vacation. You know, like going down to Disneyland or something. Hey, where should we all stay? And you, you pull up, oh, how about the, the California Hotel? Yeah. How about the Disney, Disneyland yeah. Hotel? How about other choices? And you can do it in real time, with talking with other people, so you can share, or you can do it asynchronously, where one person can go on, collect their notes, and then someone can go in an hour later and collect their notes, and it's all stored on this timeline here, so that um, essentially you can come back a week or a day later, and it's all there. We use this at... Um, at our company for all of our um, uh, team meetings. Yep. So we sort of keep a rolling thread of all the content that we shared. Um, yep. Yeah, so that's a couple other cool little features in the app, but um, you know, it's, it's, really it's, cool. it's, it's an exploration in how these things might look in the future, and we hope that developers build lots of different types of applications. How are you guys funded? So we, um, we announced a seed round last year. We're backed by Google and Greylock and Intel and Bessemer and a bunch of um, well-known investors. Um, uh, and so we did a seed round, and we're, um, that's how we got this thing started. How did, it, how did you guys start down this path? What, what, what got you interested in, in yeah. this uh, well, so my yeah. technology or whatever? So the team that we have, the core team, has, um, has built very large search platforms and search infrastructures. And um, we worked, worked together at a previous company that was called Truvio. Truvio was a video search company that I started a few years ago that we grew to become a very popular um, white label video search engine. When I left, it was the second largest video search platform on the web, and that company was acquired by AOL. And so our, the core team came from there, and so we, had a, um, we knew how to build large-scale search infrastructures that could extract meaning from signals of audio and video data. And um, you know, we thought this was an interesting area. My personal background is I've been involved in AI for a long time. So I studied AI at, um, at MIT, and I got my PhD at the AI lab at MIT. And for most of my career, um, I've been a little embarrassed by AI, <laughs> so I rarely talk about it. Yeah. But I think our team had this... Um, AI is artificial intelligence. Artificial so, intelligence, yeah. yeah. So our team had... Um, you know, I think it's when our team saw that, that, um, that IBM supercomputer that plays Jeopardy, yeah. that it became clear to us that these systems, because they could sit on such large data sets, that they could actually demonstrate very intelligent behavior. Intelligent behavior that in many cases you know, approaches what you would expect a human to respond. And in analyzing the sort of underlying technology, we realized that um, as data sets get, get larger by one order of magnitude or maybe two orders of magnitude, these systems will get extremely smart. Yeah. And so we thought it was a great opportunity to build some technology to try to power these new intelligent assistant experiences. Stephen Wolfram was here yesterday. Yeah. And he's built Wolfram Alpha. Yes, Are yeah. you thinking of bringing that kind of data set into yeah, that's, this? That, he, that would be exactly. He's studying thousands of data sets yeah. too. Yeah. So he's focused on a very similar problem, and um, that's exactly the type of data set that would help this experience or help this application. It's not in there yet, but absolutely. Yeah. Um, when I saw Siri for the first time, I, I told them, you guys are going to get bought. You know, I told them that before yeah. they even launched, and yeah. sure enough, Steve Jobs. Steve, called him next Steve Jobs. Day. Well, he called them thirty times in the first month. That wasn't reported. Really? He was so hungry for that company really? to come and join Apple, and that's why they went to Apple instead of going somewhere else. Yeah. I thought they would actually go to Google or Microsoft. Yeah. Right? Um, are you? I expect that this, this, 
feature set is going to be extraordinarily yeah. interesting to a Google, a Facebook, a Microsoft. Yeah. I know Facebook <coughs> is thinking yeah. about predictive systems or you know tra systems that will uh, compete in, in the search world in a yeah. new way. Yes. And this certainly is very attractive. I mean, I, t imagine imagine talking to this thing right now. Where are yeah. all my friends in South by Southwest? Right. You know, and there yeah. is an answer to that. There is an answer, and that that answer is. It's solvable. It's these systems will give you that answer within 18 months or less than that. Um, so I mean, it's we. So here's the thing that surprised me. Um, so th when we started talking about what we we're doing, which we only did last year, we've been working on this technology for two years, but we just started talking about it last year. And when we were talking about it last year, most people were that we talked to said, were saying that okay, that sounds kind of futuristic, maybe. Maybe five or ten years from now, we're going to start seeing like this. Something changed in the past four months, yeah. where this has become top priority, not just for the companies yeah. you mentioned, Google, yeah. Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, but this is top priority in just about every vertical where companies want to provide users with information. Well, that's right? why I'm writing a book on yeah. this. <laughs> I mean, every car company, they want to have in your car this intelligent assistant that's able to get you whatever information that you need anytime you're in the car. You know, all the connected home providers, right? The companies that make smart TVs or the ones that have set-top box solutions or gaming consoles. I'm seeing Comcast is coming to my house yeah. next week uh, or this week with a new cloud-based uh, DVR, right? Exactly. And when, it, when things go to the cloud, this becomes very uh, interesting and uh, mm -hmm. available. And so, like, Comcast knows that you live in a world where at any point in time you could select from 100 million different videos to watch. And when you're sitting on the couch, in order to navigate that tree, it takes you 20 clicks to get to what you're, 20 taps to get you what you're looking for. Yeah. And so what they want is for you to be, just be able to say, you know, what's that, what's that new Claire Danes show about, um, about the CIA that I think won a Golden Globe? You know, is it on on demand? And it should pop up like that. Let's right? jump a little bit. So 10 to 15 to 20 years from now, we're going to have self-driving cars, right? Some people claim a little earlier, but yeah. maybe for billionaires, you right. know, because it's three hundred thousand dollars to put the supercomputer and the sensors yeah. and all that, and yeah. it's going to be a custom thing for a while. Yeah. The car companies aren't going to build it for a while. We're going to, as we're driving, we're going to say, "Man, where should we go for lunch today?" Yeah. You know, it's already going to know where you're going, yeah. which is, I'm, you know, it knows I'm heading to work or something. Yeah. yeah. And, Systems like this could be listening and then yeah. presenting, you know, a few options. And because it knows the context of where the thing is driving to, mm -hmm. it knows sort of how to limit the search to the, to, you know, it's yeah. not going to show me a place in Sacramento because yeah. I'm not going to drive to Sacramento for lunch yeah. and I'm going to be in that corridor. Yeah. And uh, it knows my past behavior. Yeah. Right. I, I'm using apps already called like Place Me. Yeah. And, uh, moves that yeah. know where I go. And yeah. Place me knows every place I've been in the last five months. Right? Yeah, it's it checked me in already. It's sitting here spraying data up to the cloud right now. You yeah, know? it's pretty crazy. Yeah, so that's I mean that's going to happen. That's that's going to happen sooner than five to ten years because that's a fairly constrained problem. I mean, I probably in 2016 it will be standard in cars that um, will certainly be able to ask it questions. But I think even more, it's obviously it'll know where you're going and. Um, and what are all the places that are nearby. But it also will probably, if you wanted to, will be able to listen to your daughter in the back seat who's, who says she wants to have Italian food or she wants spaghetti and meatballs. And then the next time you like, you know, turn on the touch screen in your car, it'll show you Italian restaurants that are nearby that you can go to. Or maybe it'll just, it'll recognize the people who are in the car based on hearing their voices. And they'll already know the types of food that, you know, that you like, or the favorite restaurants because it knows something about everyone from their online profile, and so when it comes to give you suggestions, it'll give you very personalized suggestions, just based on all that context, which some of it's from the conversation, but some of it's just from the user's online activity. Well, if, if it was listening to us, we might like sushi and go out to yeah. sushi, although we're here in Austin, we'd go out to barbecue, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but when we're with our families, our behavior, my wife hates sushi, so if my yeah. wife is part of this conversation, we're not going to sushi. Yeah. We're going to steak or something else, yeah. right? Yeah. And it can pick that up over yeah. time. Yeah, I think it would. Where, where do you think businesses are going to really go with this world of context? Because they're... Yeah. Businesses are getting more and more sensor data, so they're understanding everything about the business. Yeah. Uh, Union Pacific is putting sen sensors in the trail, in the in the tracks, 
to listen really? to the engines going <laughs> overhead so it knows which, which engines and which cars need maintenance. Interesting. Or usually about a month before it actually needs maintenance just by the sound. Yeah. So we're instrumenting everything in our business. We're going to have flows of data like yeah. that. Yeah. Where do you think this kind of technology is going to take the company and how do strategists at companies need to prepare? Yeah. Well, I, so here are some of the examples that, um, that we're actually working on solutions with partners for. So it, context is going to be everywhere. It's going to be in every application. It's going to be in every business. And it's, it's, it isn't just voice or conversational. It's, like, it's big data and putting sensors in e to measure every aspect of your business operations. The stuff that we're focused on really is around some of these real-time interactions. And so very common examples, um, you know, big, big enterprise software companies sell these suites of software to enable employees to communicate and collaborate better. You know, whether it's like telepresence solutions or video conferencing solutions or big enterprise, you know, call center applications that facilitate conversations and data discovery. All of these companies want to have the ability to not just open the communication channel between two people, voice or video or text. They want to understand everything that's happening in the communication channel. And when they understand everything that, that happens in the communication channel, they can obviously make it very easy for users to discover content that's related, yeah. but also take actions that are relevant. So in a call center, right, like big companies like you know, Bank of America or uh, you know, or AT and T that have these call centers where you know they want to reduce errors and improve the um, effectiveness of their call center reps. The best way to do that is to have this intelligent companion listening to the interaction and making intelligent suggestions that allow the make it more likely to find the right information. So at Rackspace, we have hundreds of people answering the phones and yeah. helping people with cloud computing. We could put our data set into this of maybe our facts. Yeah, your knowledge base, knowledge your facts. Base and yeah. our data. And it could be listening to us and, yeah. oh, this customer's asking yeah. about something very specific with PHP, for instance. Right. And it could pop up information so that mm -hmm. person answering the phone would have more informa Absolutely. information to try to triage or try yeah. to help the customer. So the, the customer calls up and says, wow. you know, didn't you have, um, you know, didn't you have a stack that ran on a, an instance that had dual core Intel processors and wasn't it, uh, couldn't it run MySQL with replication in it? Now, if you have a call center rep that may not be entirely familiar with that, maybe they're going to misunderstand things. Maybe they're not going to find the right information. Yeah. But if you could sub-select for them, just based on the context of the conversation, what you think are the top 10 knowledge base articles that apply to that, and then the call center rep can then decide which one, uh, which one is most relevant. That probably would reduce errors significantly yeah. and make the interaction faster and more productive. Right? I mean, think about for like medical applications. Think about yeah. when you talk to your doctor, you talk to sort of like the um, the, the the nurse that's designed to do, um, you know, diagnose your problem, triage what issues you have, or maybe give you some recommendations for um, medications that you want. Um, Imagine if you have one of these intelligent assistants that could understand medical conditions, treatment options. That could probably reduce medical errors and probably improve the quality of um, the quality of service that you would get, um, and obviously reduce the cost associated with that. Right. So, well, so. I could spend all day yeah. talking to you because you're uh, seeing a new world and yeah. seeing it uh, better than most people are. And uh, thank you so much thank for you. spending some time with me and showing me the app. I want it. So. Well, you'll get it as soon as available. Thank, thank you. you. Thank so you very much, much Rob. Where do we uh, learn more about your company and follow you to follow this so we, yeah. we know when it's coming out and stuff like that? So you can go to uh, expectlabs.com. You can follow us on Twitter at, at GetMindMeld um, or at ExpectLabs. And um, yeah, and uh, you can email us at info at expectlabs.com as well. Very cool. Well, it's, thanks for spending so much time with me and it's really a great app. Thank you very thank much. You. So that's what we're doing from the uh, at the Rackspace Open Cloud Experience. We're uh, studying how innovators are bringing us new things, and in a few minutes, we're gonna we're gonna shut down for a second to change microphones. But we have an executive from Salesforce to talk about the other half of this, which is they know everything about your customers, <laughs> and you're, and uh, we use it at Rackspace, and I'm very interested in seeing what they're thinking about the future. So come back in a few minutes. Thanks for joining us at the Rackspace Open Cloud Experience. When Rackspace's live coverage from Austin continues, we'll show you the future in real time. Rackspace, backed by fanatical support, bringing you live coverage from South by Southwest daily. Hmm, so good, it hurts. The Open Cloud Experience.